Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to use the Magic Mask 2 in DaVinci Resolve. Now you can use this to isolate a subject for colour grading, masking, removing backgrounds, blurring faces, and there's a lot more that you can do with it. You're going to make sure you're in your colour page, and then you're going to come over to the Magic Mask tab over here. Make sure that the mask overlay is on so you can see what you're doing. I have a colour grade on here so it also gets rid of the colour grade when the overlay is on. And then you have to make sure that your qualifier is on. It should be on, it normally is, but just double check anyway. Now for me, I've already got a colour grade on this, so I'm going to make a new node before doing anything with Alt S or Option S if you're on a Mac. And then I'm going to find a reference frame in the clip. Now a reference frame basically it has to be one where it's all in focus, it's not blurry because of movement or the least blurry that you have available and where you can see everything that you need to track. So for me the camera doesn't move much which makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to choose this point now. Before you click anything come down to the quality and just put it on better and then you're going to click on the subject that you want to mask out. Okay that actually managed to get everything on the subject so that makes it easier. But if it doesn't get everything on the subject, and even if it does, it's still worthwhile clicking on some other bits of the subject just to make sure it doesn't lose the track. So with things like the black collar, there's a good chance that the track will get lost because we haven't selected it specifically. So I'm going to add another plus there. On the flip side of that, if I'm going to make a color grade just to the dog's fur and I don't actually want to touch the collar, then you can come over here to press the minus eyedropper, or you can hold alt or option and click and that will make sure that anything I do does not affect the color. You can see the clicks that you've done here and just delete them. So I'm going to go back and add the color just to make sure it stays tracked. And then I'm also going to do the dog nose just in case. And his eye over here because that looks like it might disappear a few times. Okay, so now I'm happy with the way it looks. You can either track forward, track backwards or track both ways. Track forward and reverse. With your tracking done, just turn off your mask overlay and now you can make the colour adjustments that you want to make. So, I might want to make him a bit brighter. He's looking a little bit purplish. Bring in some green and some more orange. And you can see that that tracks nicely. Now, if instead of that you wanted to affect the background, come back over to your magic mask panel and you can invert the mask. And now it's just affecting everything in the background. So you can do that, add a bit more of a blur. But the better way to do that, so you have both masks at once, is to right click, add node, and add an outside node. Because now you have the outside of the mask on your new node. That you can play around with, make that darker. And you have the node with the dog in it on this one. So you can make changes independent of each other and really separate your subject from the background. And the final thing you can do with your masks is to remove the background completely. Right click anywhere on the clip section and then add an alpha output. Drag the blue to the blue and it will get rid of the background. Now you'll have to do some smoothing out because obviously it's not done in front of a green screen. But it does a pretty decent job. I mean it's, it does better than the TikTok filters that everyone uses so... So here I got someone sat down and it's done a pretty good job, but we could make it better. So you've got the modes like shrink and grow. Shrink will do things like the inside, it will shrink the radius. And then if you go to grow, it would grow the radius, self-explanatory. You've got clean black and clean white. So clean black will bring in more of the black outside. It's kind of like the shrink, but it gives a more of a smoothing effect on the way in. Clean white will bring the subject further out. So I don't want that. I'm going to bring that in a little bit just to remove the edges. Play with the clean black a little bit as well. Just toggle around with things until you get something that you want. And then also adding in a little bit of denoise can just soften things a little bit and make it and make it less noisy around the edges. Just a heads up, whenever you're doing something in the magic mask, don't use the undo function because the undo function breaks the entire mask and you have to track again. It's fine if you have a good computer, but if it takes you a long time to track, you don't want to make that mistake because it's painful. So the last thing I'm going to show you today just to keep this tutorial simple is how you would blur somebody's face if they turn around and say, hey, I don't want to be in your video anymore, even though you just spent all day filming them, which does happen. So I'm going to find a reference point in here. Mm, there we go. And do the same thing. Make sure that my mask overlay is on and select his face. Grab his beard in here as well. I don't need his neck. Okay, that's a pretty decent job. So I'm just going to track forward and backwards with that one. Okay, so it did a pretty decent job. But I noticed at one point the mask jumped 
on to all of his neck, which we don't want because that'll just make the blur look weird for a few frames. So we're going to remove that by using the negative eyedropper. When you notice something like this, you have to work from your reference point. So don't just choose a random frame where you see it and then select minus because if you're to the left of the reference point and you click, it's only supposed to affect things to the left of the new click. And if you're to the right, it's the same way. So I'm going to find the first point that this messed up to the left of my clip. And if you want to go to your reference point, you can just go to the reference frame like that. There we go. Then click the minus again. And then I can track reverse one more time. Okay, I would say that's good enough. So I'm gonna come over to effects, come to the mosaic blur and drag it on. Remove the mask overlay. And there we go. We've got a nice blur on the guy's face. Let's play it all and just make sure. Pop up here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no way you can tell who that is, so that's great. Just another one on the masks, just to touch up a little bit. You do have a paintbrush tool, so you can change parts of your mask when you want by adding extra to it or removing things from it. But this is frame by frame, so it would take absolutely ages to use. And also, if you're just using a mouse, then it's going to be very inaccurate. So it's not something I've ever used. But if you have something jump out randomly over here or somewhere else, you can just use this to clean things up. And you do have the Smart Refine as well. I'm actually on faster quality there and it was pretty good. So I guess you can use it sometimes. But you do have the Smart Refine when you're on the better quality. Again, I don't usually touch that. I would drag it down to zero if you're doing something and the mask is bleeding over a lot. But most of the time it's fine just to leave. 